Hello YouTube, this is Robert Ness 816 and I'm coming at you with a teardown video. This is an after the teardown part, obviously. So the speaker has been ripped apart into little pieces. Very easy to take apart this brand new JBL Charge 4. Don't ask why I took it apart. I did it because this is one of those times where I'm bored and I got curious to know why the speaker does not have a uh, speakerphone function, whereas all of the previous generations did, except for this one. That's my boiler turning on. Um, so the conclusion that I have, and by the way, this is the JBL Charge 4J, I think, is what this one was. Still is, actually. Where is that part? It's... Oh, yeah, right. Here we go. So JBL Charge 4, Charge 4 J. So, anyways, this speaker does have a speaker phone function and it was present on JBL's website as having that. However, it's been disabled for some unknown reason. JBL claims that their customers do not want a speaker phone function in their larger speakers. Um, Excuse me, but the, uh, what is it, the one that's above this one, the Extreme, I think it is, has a speakerphone function, and this one does not. That, that, so the, obviously I think that's like a bullshit excuse on their part. Um, and if you're wondering what this is, that's a vent, but this is a microphone. So your Charge 4 does have a microphone. It's been disabled. So if we go over here, you can see the wires coming out of it. They go right here, and they plug into the main board, whoops, right over here. This is where your microphone plugs in. So it's been disabled for some unknown reason. And uh, I don't know why JBL chose to do that, but they did. So um, basically for the same price as the Charge 3 when it came out, you're getting one driver, no speaker phone function or disabled one, no built-in or no uh, included wall charger. Um, so you're getting a lot less for your money with the Charge 4 compared to the Charge 3. So JBL raised the bar with the Charge 3 and then lowered it with the Charge 4. So the new racetrack style driver, I guess JBL likes uh, watching NASCAR or something, is the main focus of the speaker. It's also the uh, focus of a lot of criticism. So it does sound better from a fidelity standpoint in that it has better highs and deeper lows, but the um, stereo sound stage that the Charge 3 had has now completely gone because they're taking left and right and mixing it into one channel. So even though the drivers on the Charge 3 were right next to each other, they were still playing independently of one another, and that made for a more open sound stage, whereas this one... Um, you do hear it, especially with uh, older heavy metal music that I listen to a lot, uh, where they really emphasize stereo a lot, and you do notice it between um, this speaker and the Charge 3. Even my Flip 4, you see a pretty decent difference. Um, so I am not for the mono speaker thing. This is a better driver, no doubt, than what the Charge 3 has because of the... Uh, the uh, benefits I mentioned before, but it is um, not a suitable replacement because if, say if you had uh, 250 by 60 millimeter drivers instead of 150 by 90 in here, you would have more cone area than what the Charge 3 had, basically giving you <clears throat> a very similar effect to just having one large driver. So you could then take those two smaller drivers, increase the excursion on those, also increasing the wattage. So instead of being 30, you would have two 15 watt drivers, put them into this size housing here, and you would have, in my opinion, a proper Charge 4, a proper upgrade to the Charge 3. Whereas this one is, in my opinion, it's a step in the wrong direction. Because um, like I said, the sound is better, it's clearer for sure. But the sound stage is not the same, and it kind of, it puts me off when I listen to music, though, because it's just, I could tell it's not the same. Especially when I compare my uh, Charge 3 versus this one, it's just, it's not the same effect at all. So we'll go over the uh, main board real quick. 
And for anyone who takes apart one of these, do not unsolder the uh, Bluetooth antenna. So you can see here the uh, they use some really high temp solder there, and it sucks. Um, I would have un uh, heated up that antenna and just kind of peeled it off again, but um, you know whatever. We learn from our mistakes, don't we? Hopefully JBL will learn from theirs and not go with the fucking mono bullshit driver setup again in one of their best-selling speakers and basically taking a good formula they have and rather than improving it completely changing it and fucking it up for everyone so you know yeah, whatever so anyway here's the <clears throat> here's the new amplifier board here's the new amplifier itself right here this one does do stereo but it's been um, implemented in mono and I think it does 30 watts at 2 ohms and I think it does 15 watts times 2 at either uh, 4 ohms or 8 ohms. I have to re I don't remember what it said in the, uh, the PDF that I looked up on it. But um, there's your new Texas Instruments amplifier. You can actually type this into um, YouTube and you'll get an entire video from Texas Instruments about the benefits of this particular amplifier versus its uh, predecessors. Um, so pretty good design actually on a board. Very clean as far as its assembly goes. Sorry about my voice being crackly, but... So, lots of nice little micro connectors here and stuff. Big beefy connector there for that battery. So we have here these little solder joints here for heat dissipation. It's kind of like a cheap way of making a, uh, a heat sink, I guess. There's your Bluetooth right there. This unplugs, but the way that it was mounted, it's actually very difficult to get to. So, take a close-up view of these chips. So, anyways, there. Main board of the Charge 4, that's pretty much the exciting part was that and that little racetrack, racetrack here, I'm going to go like that, driver setup. Um, here's your battery. 7,500 milliamps. As you can hear, the cycle time on my boiler is pretty short. But uh, there we go. There's your model ID998, made by IES. So, in my opinion, JBL could have gone with a different battery style. So this is three cells that have been arranged in a triangle configuration. Um, what they could have done was taken those three cells or gone with a flat style battery pack, which probably would have been smarter, but they could have taken those three cells and arranged two next to each other and then another one in the back and you would have had the same thing and then hey, you could have put that single driver and put it into the middle. So that would have been the smart thing to do, in my opinion, because this off-centered crap here is really another reason why I don't like this particular speaker like I do with the Charge 3, because when you listen to it, if you're like three feet away from it, you do notice that it's coming from one side, and that is that sucks. Um, it gives you the impression that there's something wrong with this brand new speaker that you got, because there is just one driver coming from you know, the uh, right side rather than being in the middle where it should be. So if it was in the middle, I doubt that there would be uh, as many people that are so critical of the speaker. Um, but you're still not going to replace the openness that you would get having two separate drivers um, playing, you know, independently of one another. So even though it is in the same chamber, though, it still does make a difference, though, at least uh, in, in my opinion, and apparently the opinions of a lot of other people having a uh, stereo um, speaker. So the Flip 5 is actually coming out, and it is going to have the same oval speaker setup. And um, I don't know. We'll see how that, uh, that one fares. But I'm basically going to hang on to my Charge 3 and Flip 4 because the... Um, two driver setup for me is just fine and honestly if JBL had put a little bit of thought into their um, design process they could have continued on improving their um, two driver setup instead of just changing hands and going with this weird you know mono setup here 
Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Oh, and also, like I said before, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, it does have a microphone, so I probably mentioned this already, but there you go. There's your microphone wires going all the way up, and it connects to the board right over here, so it's been disabled for some unknown reason. This speaker did have a speakerphone function, but for whatever reason, JBL chose to disable it, and they had it on their website, and they quickly took it down after a lot of people started complaining that the uh, speakerphone function was not working on their speakers. So if you have people complaining about that, then obviously people do use the speakerphone function, as I do on my Charge 3, my Flip 4, um, even the Pulse 3 that I have, I use the speakerphone function on those speakers um, with pretty decent regularity, actually, because it allows me to basically you know, do things on my phone, whatever the hell I want to do on my phone, and then, you know, it's better than listening to the speakerphone on my on my actual phone. So, um, in, in that regard, it is a useful feature to have. And um, why JBL would disable it is kind of stupid, if you ask me. So, the Charge 3 had a number of things going for it. It had that nice stereo sound stage. Um, it had the speakerphone function, it came with and included a uh, charger, um, you know, all for the same price as what this thing is selling for. So, you know, JBL's got to really rethink their target market, though, because they're kind of, um, at least I think they're kind of alienating them with what they've come out with here. This is kind of like a design that should have stayed in the um, design phase and should have been scrapped, to be honest with you. This is like one of those poor choices that came out and everyone was like oh don't do it and someone's like no I'm gonna do it whatever and here we have it so it's not a replacement for the charge 3 it is a weird evolutionary step in the wrong direction if you ask me so that's my opinion on the uh, charge 3 or charge 4 actually um, I can't take it apart any more than this without risking uh, any further damage. I mean, I'm sure it'll come apart easy, but whatever. Um, so this thing, it does come apart actually pretty easy, at least to this point, because everything kind of twists off. Everything has connectors. It's basically very serviceable in that regard. Um, much the same as how the uh, Charge 3 was. The Charge 3 is a little bit more difficult to take apart, but this one is certainly... Um, a step in the right direction as far as JBL's uh, assembly methods are concerned. Um, this one definitely is very user-friendly as far as um, taking it apart and putting it back together again. I would assume that they had issues with their technicians taking apart their older models and then having uh, trouble putting them back together, if at all, with the way that they were uh, manufacturing their older speakers, especially the Pulse 2 which is a complete piece of shit as far as its construction goes. It's literally held together with glue and tape. Um, the Pulse 3, on the other hand, is much, much better as far as its um, assembly goes and overall build quality. So, anyways, um, that's the Charge 4 in a nutshell, taken down to its almost barest form. Um... Let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Let me know if you're fine with the oval driver setup being off-centered, or if you want it in the middle, or if you want to have two smaller oval drivers being placed towards the center like I mentioned. Let me know, guys. Thanks for watching.